YouTube. This is Michael Borderhan again, and uh, thank you for tuning into my second vlog. This is I'm hoping to roll these vlogs once a month, but we'll see what happens. Um, basically, I want to talk about a few things. Firstly, I'm going to be doing my playthroughs. Um, well, I'm going to expand my playthroughs into not just Xbox 360 games. Uh, well, this the third season, or as I call season three, uh, is going to be Castle Crashes. For those of you that want to see that, I'll be um, posting the first video hopefully tomorrow, not tonight. Um, the next season after that, maybe Dreamcast, maybe Saturn, or even do a PSX game. I haven't decided as of yet, so depending on what happens, I've got a uh, PlayStation One, my PS Two. Um, and my very retro Dreamcast and Sega Saturn, so I can have a choice out of those four consoles what to do. Oh, and also the PSP, so if you want to, uh, any suggestions on games for those consoles, let me know what you want to do and uh, I can uh, hopefully oblige by doing a nice little playthrough for that. Also, you can see the new uh, design for the Genius logo and um, new extra additions that I've done to the videos which mostly has been done during post-production. Um, I've done this to make it more engaging, I think is the word, um, because I want it to, to sort of capture people's attention and make it different from what everybody else is doing, because I, I don't want to do what everybody else is doing, to tell you the truth. I don't want to do Nerd Genius videos um, that look like Rad Brads, or do Nerd Genius videos that look like um, so like the the gamer or something like that, and I, I'm trying not to have my videos laid out like guys like AVGN, you know, or um, Happy Console Gamer. I want to try and do something different and make it unique. Um, but again, comments are appreciated. So if you guys want to want to comment and let me know exactly you, what you feel um, needs to be done or what you feel is lacking in my videos, go for it. Make a comment. You know, um, you can email me on my Nerd Genius. Uh, .com email account which is listed below uh, also you can like comment and subscribe so uh, any of those things are great um, also you you probably see me yesterday on on Twitter uh, Facebook and also smart out moments website well, I did a live chat with everybody on there. It was uh, myself, Tony Mango, and Hakan um, talking about WrestleMania. Now, I'm not going to lie to you guys. WrestleMania wasn't great. It it wasn't the the event of the century that everyone else was talking about. Yes, it made 8.9 mil in uh, ticket sales. So, of course, it's uh, it's done what it's supposed to for the WWE. It managed to be a very entertaining evening for um, most of the people who were there in attendance because wrestling's great when you're attending the events. But I felt it lacked a lot. Um, and, and the thing is, don't, you know, start spamming me and, and you know, telling me that I'm basically a, an asshole that has no idea, you know, about wrestling and, and it was great and I don't know what I'm talking about and blah, 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 blah. The fact is, it's it, it's been that way for a while now, leading up to this event, that they've they've managed to sort of let the content slide a lot, and it's you know what? Let me let me break it down for you guys just a little bit. Um, from the start of, of Mania, Brian versus Sheamus. What happens? Brian gets beat within. What uh, 28 seconds? What, what did that do? What did that do to make Seamus look good? What did that do to make Brian look good? It did nothing for either man, and it stole their WrestleMania moment. The event had 10 commercials. You're telling me that you couldn't actually take one of those commercials away and give some time to Brian and Seamus? You're telling me that you couldn't have taken a celebrity guest, cut their time down a bit? Well, that, that stupid Heath Slater promo with Flo Rider, you couldn't have basically taken that away and given time to Brian and Sheamus. Or the stupid Divas match, 
you couldn't have taken that away and given time to Brian and Seamus. There was no need for what they did there. There was no need to be pissing over the World Heavyweight Championship and pissing over everything that they've done for Brian and Seamus leading up to this point. It did nothing. Okay, now let's go on from there for a second. Let's look at. Um, sorry, I'm just trying to get myself a nice, comfortable position here for you guys. Um, yeah, don't take that in any way, you know. This is not, not sexual. Don't, don't report me. Do not report me. Right, back to Mania. Um, now we look at the next match. The next match was, I believe, Randy Orton versus Kane. Solid match, but again, it looked more like a main event match on SmackDown rather than a WrestleMania match. It did nothing, and, and the lack of build for this match did nothing to bring these guys out and say, well, you know what, that was amazing. People are not gonna be talking about Kane versus Orton after WrestleMania, people are going to probably find it extremely forgettable. Now, again, moving on, Cody Rhodes versus Big Show. Yeah, Show needed a Mania win. Why give him the Intercontinental Championship? Why? Show is like up here. The Intercontinental Championship is here. The title should be used to elevate someone. It was doing great on Cody Rhodes's waist. It was great to keep that title on that young kid because he is at that level at the moment where he's not ready to be a world champion yet but he was carrying the IC division again boom you gave, you gave Big Show the win fair enough right that's that's fine fine and dandy you give the guy the win couldn't have been a DQ what why what have they accomplished by doing that with Rhodes nothing okay moving on again what was the next match uh, this is how forgettable Mania is I can't even remember the next match well, going on to another couple of fucking commercials. Oh, oh great! And uh, moving on to let's move on to the Divas match. The Divas match again. Beth Phoenix, Divas champion, comes out to Eve's music. Why? What? Well, what was the point of that? She comes out to Eve's music. Everybody's fucking half dead at this point because they're wondering what the fuck they're watching that happens boom, 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 boom. Kelly and what's her name wins and she looked like she shat her pants Maria Maraskinis or whatever her name is I don't even know I'm British so I never watch extra that we don't have it over here so you know so end of day she's supposed to have injured ribs anyway I don't understand why this match even happened boom 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 goes a dynamite they win forgettable match again and you know what, with the Divas, I know I rag on them, I know everybody rags on them, like literally everyone in the internet community rags on Divas, and you know why? Again, you could have, it's been done with the knockouts, it's been done with Shimmer, um, it's been done with Glow. Women can be credible. Women can, like, they can carry a championship and they can look good. They can have their own storylines. I don't understand why they want to throw this shit together, make them look like they're pretty and say, here you go, here's a piss break. And the annoyance, the annoyance of this whole situation has pissed me off. Just, it, it's like they don't care. The WWE doesn't care about the division. So if they don't care about the division, why is anyone else going to care? Now, again, moving on from that, let, let, let's uh, talk about the the next match. I think it was uh, uh, the Hell in a Cell. It, it did what it was supposed to do, and it was literally as good as last year. It wasn't as physical as last year, because if you go back you'll see that Triple H and Taker nearly killed each other last year to put on a stellar performance. This year was more about storytelling. And you know what, with HBK in anything, that guy shits gold. Literally, he shits gold. You could see that Taker and Triple H weren't as, um, they were really slow paced. So they weren't as great as they 
were last year in terms of their abilities, but they told a great story and that's one thing you can't teach to most of these new guys because most of them don't understand how to tell a credible story in the ring. Apart from, um, we'll, we'll go into Punk and Jericho in a little bit actually, but let's, let's move on from that again. Right, um, Team Johnny versus Team Laurinaitis, again, it was a bit of a spot fest. Zack Ryder came in, clean house, he looked really good in this match. Ziggler looked really good, R-Truth looked really good, Santino looked really good. And the ma majority of these guys looked really good in this match, but it was such a short match. Again, there wasn't enough attention to it. Um, the detail, the, the story, it was not, wasn't enough to actually be told in this match. And it pisses me off a little bit, the route they took, where Eve suddenly cost them the match and turned fucking heel. It's like they ignored the months of booking that this girl has gone through, put her in this match, and it's like, why would anyone blindly allow this girl to walk Zack Ryder to the ring, knowing what they know? It, and it, it, just forget about the Divas match before. But anyway, kick Zack Ryder in the testicles, they're gonna have some sort of fucking storyline. Long's fired, so he's gone. I don't know what they're gonna do with that, and hopefully stay tuned to Raw tonight, so we'll see what's gonna happen. Um, move on from there again, we have Punk versus Jericho, fucking stellar match, amazing bout between two guys, you know, it was a clinic, exactly what I expected it to be, 30 minutes of pure gold, but it wasn't enough to save this fucking show, and again, I'm not ragging on Punk, I'm not ragging on Jericho, I'm not ragging on the talent, because a lot of these guys went out there and they put their heart and their soul into this so I'm not not ragging on that at all um, but it did piss me off a bit now again moving on to the Rock vs Cena a lot of people have called the Rock vs Cena epic and oh it was an amazing encounter and these guys were so blah blah and it, it did everything it was supposed to do and blah 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 and Cena played the heel role, which again, if you uh, look on last week's episode of Smack Talk, I said that Cena was going to play the heel because that's the only route he could take. They were going on about 50-50. That was a bunch of bullshit. Miami booed Cena out of that fucking building. And of course they're going to. They're embracing their guy, The Rock. But the thing that pissed me off the most, he did not put Cena over. Now, a lot of guys are comparing this to Hogan versus The Rock, right? I think it was WrestleMania, um, I believe it was 19. I believe it was 19, don't, don't hold me on that. It was, um, again, it, it was a big bunch of bullshit. Every time Hogan and The Rock um, had an encounter, the Rock got put over. Hogan passed the torch. Now, the moment Cena and The Rock has that same encounter, you're telling me that The Rock can't give this guy a win. Can't pass the torch onto the guy who's literally going to be holding the fucking company on his shoulders. He's been doing it for years. And he can't just do that. He can't give him this fucking swan song. He put Bill Goldberg over. Right, and that was a fucking waste of space, but you can't do that with John Cena. I, I don't understand this. It, it makes no fucking sense to me. Cause, and they're even saying that this is The Rock's last match in the WWE. It was a once in a lifetime opportunity. It was a once in a lifetime that creative could have done something that beyond epic proportions. The Rock still would have been cheered the fucking hell. You know, that Cena would have been booed out of the building still, but at least he would have put the guy over business wise i understand okay he did that everyone went home happy and and you know what really pissed me off as well how sluggish the rock was in the ring he's been training with with uh, you know uh kurt hawkins and michael mcgillicutty um and he was training with truth and, and miz but yet the guy was really sluggish in the fucking ring and the reason why he's too 
big. He's literally gained so much muscle mass for his like movie roles and stuff. And I understand why he's done it, but he wasn't in ring shape. Yeah, everyone's sitting there pegging this match to be the, the greatest match of all time, which it wasn't. It was good. It was full of fucking rest holds. But it wasn't the, great ma the greatest match of all time. And yet, I know most people are going to be like, but the story, focus on the story. Yeah, the problem is, the whole story was all over the fucking place. From the get-go of this feud, the story was all over the place. So how are you supposed to invest in this match when you can't invest in the fucking story? <sighs> now, again, another thing that, that annoyed me about this event is the pacing. Literally, the, the pacing was slow, sluggish. Every time someone was building momentum, the match was over. You know, it, the pace started to quicken up in Taker versus Triple H, boom, match done. The pace started to quicken up in, in Punk versus Jericho, boom, match done. The pace started to quicken up in, um, oh, in, in Laurinaitis versus Team Long, boom, match is over with. And that was the for common formula of you know, WrestleMania 28, it was literally all over the fucking place. And I know I'm going to get a lot of heat for this, and you know what, I, I probably deserve to get flamed for this video, but at the same sense, how can you literally sit there, put this fucking event on, and book it so badly? It, it doesn't make sense to me. It doesn't make sense at all. It's like throwing these amazing, talented people into something that you can't even justify giving them that, that one moment, that one moment to put on a fucking show and show these people that the WWE still has stars. I understand this event was mostly about The Rock and Cena, but for God's sake, how many times do you have to show Cena's baby pics? How many times do you have to show The Rock's baby pics? Didn't you have a one hour episode dedicated to this fucking match? Didn't you have all these promos going all the way back, months on end, being ploughed through on Raw and Smackdown of these two? Why in the blue hell do you have to over promote it? and you over promote how great you guys are and how amazing you are and how you help everybody out. We just wanted a simple pay-per-view. And you know, over here in the UK, we pay 15 quid for it, so that's fine. It's just like, okay, 15 quid gone down the drain. But there's a lot of guys who paid 65 bucks, $65, just so they can watch this shit. It boggles the fucking mind. And literally, I'm at a point where I'm, I, I want to tap out. I literally just want to say, you know what? Fuck WWE, I'm done. But the problem is, I can't do that. I've been watching this since I was like this little seven-year-old kid watching uh, WrestleMania 7 for the first time. You know, I remember watching Hogan versus Slaughter. It was one of my favorite matches in all my life. It was, it was something that I never knew even existed. And well, once I watched it, I saw all these stars, these characters, the, the Hogans, the Warriors, the Savages, they were amazing. And it made me want to be a wrestling fan. I was jealous, I never had Sky Television. I didn't, you know, the only way I could have access to these videos were bootleg copies from my friends at school because I didn't have no money. I was just a small little kid. Then as I grew older, I, you know, I get stuck with it. All my friends were growing up and, and getting lives while I was still watching professional wrestling. I had people mock me openly and, and talk about how, you know, wrestlers are fake and how most of them can't even read and write. I was a guy sitting at school in, in a sixth form reading Have a Nice Day, where most of these kids were sitting there thinking, oh, you know, how, how did Foley write that? Mick Foley can write that. I read Titan Brown, you know, um, 
I think it was one of my first literary novels that I purchased and it was written by Mick Foley. I then, as the product kept growing and growing, the, the Attitude Era, I lived through that. I watched a competition between WWE and WCW, I watched ECW, I trained as a pro wrestler and I worked for over two years as a pro wrestler. And I've lived through this business, I understand what it takes to be a part of this business. And the one thing that pisses me off the most is how a company that had so many prominent stars that had such amazing talents, still do have amazing talents, can't fucking get it right. It's like, if people criticise you, you learn from your fucking mistakes. <sighs> the biggest wrestling company in America and all over the world. And they can't seem to understand that the fans want a certain product, yet they can't deliver that product because they keep sitting there making fun of those same fans who buy your tickets, who spend the 65 bucks for your pay-per-views, who sit there and try and last it out with you until you come to the realization that you need to change. And you do need to change. It's, it makes me laugh how simplicity isn't used anymore. And it's, it's a simple, simple storyline. Look at The Rock versus Cena. It's from the moment that that storyline started to the moment it ended. There was a great route they could have taken, but they refused to take it. You know, they could have turned Cena heel for one night, like they turned Sean heel for one night. They could have literally brought The Rock into this being The Rock instead of adjusting with poo-poo and caca jokes and acting like he's a five-year-old child. There is no point to just sitting there and saying, we know better than our audience, because you don't. Nine times out of ten, you end up fucking over what made your product great. You know, Tim Kring thought that he understood heroes better than the sci-fi fans and people tuned out. You know? Roseanne Barr thought that she understood what Roseanne was about and ended up losing the majority of her viewers so she had to end the show. Well, also that and she was going fucking crazy but we'll, we'll go on to that one. The fact is, when people get together and people want something, nine times out of ten they're going to get it. That, that's how shows are saved, that's how products are adjusted and changed. And the thing is, if people don't like something you know the companies will go out and try and change that don't think you're bigger than your audience because they're not they're... and that's what pisses me off now again I know I'm gonna get a lot of heat for this but I do love wrestling and I know I sound like a fucking pessimist but that's because I'm literally looking for a product that doesn't seem to be there anymore maybe that's my fault you know, maybe that's that's just my grievance and everybody else is happy with it. But I'm not. And I was pissed off with WrestleMania 27, with The Miz versus Cena, with that whole scenario, that pissed me off. And what got worse is what they did tonight. And they're devaluing a championship that has had prestige. Fuck, it was carried by Triple H himself, for God's sake. And it was one of the last world championships that Shawn Michaels ever held. You know, and you've got two quality guys that could have put on a stellar match. And you fucked it up. There's not really much else I can say about that, really. Anyway. Let's forget about that fucking rant and... Leave a comment. If you guys want to talk about... Um, yeah, if you want me to, to comment on my wrestling days and stuff and you want to hear more about that, leave a comment. Maybe I can do sort of like a three part video or something talking about when I started and, and how everything sort of worked out because I'm not doing it anymore and there's a reason behind it but we'll, we can talk about that later.
but don't ever think you can you can knock me you can shout abusive words at me down the street you can sit there and spam the shit out of my genius page and, and say that I don't understand what wrestling's all about or oh, that I'm a biggest fucking pessimist on the planet but don't ever say that I'm not passionate about this because I am I love pro wrestling you know I love Ring of Honor I love TNA believe it or not even though it's a piece of shit at the moment I still do love the product and I want it to get better I love the WWE I loved ECW still do love WCW you know AWA NWA and the the shell of its former self that is at the moment you know I love everything about pro wrestling there is no reason why pro wrestling shouldn't love its fans back and companies like the WWE shouldn't sit there and maybe think about why it's losing money there's obviously a problem and yeah you can sit there and, and throw big stars into Wrestlemania main events and have guys like Brock Lesnar come back which by the way he's re-signed for those of you who don't know or Batista who's been bad mouthing the fucking company in its new direction for months or you can sit there and say there's a problem we need to fix this problem maybe we need to talk to the punks maybe we need to talk to the Danielsons maybe we need to talk to the Cena's and find a way where we can actually get this product moving again one of the things that made the Attitude Era great was because they allowed these guys to be themselves no scripted promos just flat out you if something didn't work they fixed it Road Dog, Jesse James wasn't a great single star Billy Gunn or Rockabilly wasn't a great single star what did they do they put them as a tag team made them the New Age Outlaws one of them could talk the other one was fucking acrobatic boom put them in DX boom they excelled there's no reason why they can do this again why, why they can't redirect the product and allow these guys to help themselves you talk about the guys not putting themselves over let them do it there's no reason why not right um that's my rant over so um a few other things before I go um, again we've got another competition for 2100 Xbox Live points and this time uh, I'm gonna give you guys a choice it's between the 2100 Xbox Live points or a 20 pounds PSN voucher so make a decision what you want to do with it it's, it's up to you um, leave a comment subscribe to the channel like my videos that's just what you need to do and you know just voice an opinion and um, we'll see how it goes from there if it's successful then I'll keep rolling the the competitions every month out for you guys just to have you guys uh, get more and more of a, uh, a present from me so to speak it's a thank you you know that's the reason why I run these competitions is a great big thank you to give you guys something that normally um, most channels won't sort of like give to you I know a couple of guys actually do 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 it but that's a big thank you for liking me and, and putting up with me including stuff like this um, secondly yeah and well should I say thirdly yeah thirdly the rewriting the book is still coming me and Tony are going to be uh, getting the commentary done tonight for it so that should be up again it's going to be focusing on the rock and Cena versus Miz and Truth the Survivor Series match is I'm going to basically go through step by step on how I would have booked that storyline again leave a comment subscribe tell me if you like it if you do brilliant we're going to keep rolling this out and it's going to be a more user focused sort of thing so you guys will have a chance to submit your own videos your own rebooks because you know this is what this um, show is going to be about it's going to find out exactly what you guys want what the fans want so and that's it from me for now so uh bye bye